week we're in Bristol to mop the brow of an anxious young doctor as he takes his first step on the property ladder. He's already making Kirsty's blood pressure rise because he's treating his house buying a bit too clinically. I can't you read what's going on with him. You react so emotionally. Yeah, but he comes in and goes... Mm, 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 mm. is in a proper pickle. At 33, he's a first-time buyer and should be in the perfect position. But there's a problem. He's petrified. The mere idea of buying has left our doctor paralysed with fear, with no experience and little knowledge of what to look out for. He's come to us for some help. It's been a bit scary, to be honest. The whole process of buying a place and going through the, the logistics of finding somewhere and then finding a nice place and then not getting horribly ripped off for the whole process has been, uh, it's put me off. After years as a skint student, Ian is now a fully trained clinical psychologist and has enough money saved to make his mark and buy. But this one is a panicked practitioner. I hate haggling with people pretty much. I think I pay over the odds for almost everything. I've had jobs before where I've worked with some really scary, dangerous people and that isn't at all freaky to me. But for some reason, dealing with bloody estate agents fills me with a sense of, of utter dread. I'm just the person trying to buy a house and I feel like a... A, a little swimmer among sharks. They're not sharks. They're estate agents with something you want. Property. A generation ago, house hunters of Ian's age, they might have been on their third or fourth house by now. And nowadays, there are literally thousands of Ians right across the country vying to get their first step on the ladder. Ian really needs to get a grip, and fast. He's wasted too much time and money on rent for tiny rooms and shared houses. Time to grow up. Luckily, he has rented in Bristol for five years and knows where he wants to be. The areas I think I want to live are kind of the green, leafy places, but not too far from the city centre. And there's quite a lot of that around, actually, Bristol. That's one thing Bristol's quite good for. Well, seeing as Ian's a doctor, I think we should adopt a scientific approach to this search. The plan is to encourage him to go for somewhere that needs work or even buy in an up-and-coming area. Well, he is a late starter and needs to be outperforming the market. I lack that hard-nosed kind of cheeky thing that you need to be able to knock people down. I think I'd just be tempted to give the asking price, or perhaps 2,000 more, you know. <laughs> it's lucky we're here, but it's going to be tough. I hope he's ready to take on the challenge. Can we talk about what it is you're looking for? Yeah, I'm looking for a place not too dissimilar to where I am right now. It's quite spacious, and I'd like to keep that spaciousness. Somewhere quite quiet, quite leafy, a little bit tucked away from the world, mm -hmm. and, um, but not too far from the city centre. And what are the drawbacks of the rented place? It's kind of damp and cold, because the walls are very thin. There was a time when you could hear the couple upstairs having sex a great deal, which is not... <clears throat> well, it's not ideal, is it? And also... <laughs> Also, there's a mouse in the place. I have a little mouse living with me, which that is just... Is, you know what causes that? <coughs> Tell me. in bed. Is that right? I'm not at all troubled by the fact that you don't want to deal with estate agents. What does worry me, though, is if you were afraid of the physical structure, if you thought you wouldn't be able to paint walls, replace a kitchen, etc., etc. Right. No, that doesn't worry me at all, actually. I'm not massively capable at doing things like that, but I'm enthusiastic about it. So you're quite happy to go along for the ride with Phil and I? And... I think so, and see what you've got to suggest to me. The thing that I'm worried about is that so we'll you know, find you're something. Scared. No, I'm not scared. I'm just worried that we'll find something, and if it has damp, or if it doesn't have the right windows, or if it doesn't have this, or if it doesn't have that, mm. it's going to be a problem. He says he's open to compromise. I think our problem will be finding a house in budget that's not on a busy road, that hasn't got a mouse, <laughs> or shagging neighbours. We, I, sorry, noisy neighbours aside, Ian's next worry is his budget. For a maximum of £195,000, he wants a two-bed flat with space, light and a garden if possible. In the past five years, house prices have rocketed in North Bristol, with more and more people wanting to move here. This means we've got some serious competition. I can come see it at 2.30 this afternoon. Properties here are selling before agents have time even to print up the details. So many of the flats that I'm coming up with are all developed flats. They're all going to look the same inside. It's not really what Ian's looking for. We could show Ian a heap of these, but we wouldn't be doing our job if we only showed him the easy option. So we've tracked down some stunning properties that will not only suit Ian, but will also add value, allowing him to play catch-up with the market. Remember, he's 33 and a first-time buyer. 
but he's going to have to realise that compromise is the name of the game. And our first property means saying bye-bye to quiet leafy lanes. It's on the market at £180,000 and is packed with potential. This flat is the biggest in terms of square footage that we've got to show you. Right. But it's on the busiest road of all the flats that we're showing you. Yeah, that's really quite bad. This is a road I hurtle down sometimes at great speed, and okay. other people do too. There are other greater reasons for bringing you here, and it's about value for money in terms of the square footage here. Right. This is a very big flat. We're determined to show Ian that if he can get over the road noise outside, this flat has lots of promise. It has a big separate kitchen, a light bathroom and two good-sized bedrooms. It's also crammed with original features. Great news for resale. But Ian would need to be prepared to get his hands pretty dirty if he was going to do the work I believe this flat needs. That room we've just come from, I envisage as a bedroom. OK. Oh, right. OK. This paper structure comes down. Mm -hmm. This paper structure comes down. What we're making use of is that lovely window. Right. So come with me. OK. So this has gone, all gone, all gone. Oh, my God. Right. So your sitting room mm -hmm. runs from this wall right through there. OK. It's across the whole of the back of this very wide house. So what happens to the kitchen? The kitchen is there. Cleverly, in the bathroom. And the bathroom would be moved, so it's next to the sitting room. No more dark, dingy corridors. What you want to do is utilise the quiet at the back of the house, mm -hmm. create a really good entertaining space and add value enormously to this property, which I really think that would do. Right. Is it difficult to change bathrooms? From no, one room not at all. Is that not... The difficult thing is to move the plumbing. Kitchen and bathroom plumbing is interchangeable. Is that you right? have to move the gas. OK. But that's it. I do hope we haven't pushed it too far with this one on the road. It's a strong flat, but he's certainly going to need some imagination. Also, I have to hope Curtis doesn't go frightening him off with too many stories about knocking down walls. No one should be frightened of knocking down walls, but this flat does need more than a facelift. It would be straightforward and reasonably cheap, but the look of fear in his eyes tells me he just can't see that. You know, Phil, it occurs to me that that flat for a property virgin is a bit too Pamela Anderson. Ah, <laughs> very good. Hiya. Hello. How are you doing? That right. was quick. Wasn't it? Well, what do you think? I think, on balance, the only bit I like about that flat is the lovely windows in the back. It's just the noise and the traffic would absolutely do my head, I think. You made that point clearly at the beginning. We just thought, we've got to throw it in. We thought the space. Big. We thought sure. the space. So, space isn't an issue. Ian just wants those quiet, leafy streets. Well, his wish is our command. And our next appointment is actually a house. So, probably not what Ian is expecting. But as he needs to take a giant leap onto the property ladder, this house and location could be the perfect launch pad. We're here in St Paul's, which is next to Montpellier, which is next to St Andrews, which is the area you want to be in. Yeah. So we're two areas away from your favourite, but Far I up. think this <laughs> area will benefit from the ripple effect of what's going on in St Andrews. And what's the ripple effect? improving areas, pushing out and making the areas next door to them better. If Ian bought here and the buzz of St Andrews spreads, property prices will soar. This end of terrace house has been on the market for five months, so a deal could be done on the asking price of £192,500. We think it's got bags of potential, and because it's a house you get a more traditional layout, which might suit our punter. This gives Ian two reception rooms, a separate kitchen and two bedrooms. He even gets his own garden. It may be quirky at the moment, but nothing a good facelift wouldn't fix. I really, really, really like, the like the layout. I like the fact that it's got a huge bathroom, two decent-sized bedrooms, your own front door, which mm. doesn't open onto your sitting room. Well, yeah. You can strip the floorboards, you can da tap dance all night. It's nobody's problem but your own. Right. I think that's the joy of, of owning a house, freehold houses, that you've got complete control about what happens. I'm slightly confused about the leasehold, freehold thing. But if, you, if you live in a flat and you want to change the floor, you're going to have to ask permission of, of the freeholder. You only own the lease. He owns the structure, the fabric of the building. OK. In a house, you're the freeholder. You do as you please. I've got a feeling, though, that none of this really matters to Ian. He's driven by decor and it will start to drive me mad. Just a quick lick of paint would totally transform this house. Is it grabbing you in any way? It sort of does. It sort of does, not enormously. 
I have to say. It's just very oddly decorated. It's not how yeah. I'd have it. I'm a bit of a chicken about the possibility of rain or cold. Right. So if you don't mind, I won't accompany you and fill into the garden. Actually, it's steep and she's got heels on. Oh. Oh. So come Hasn't on, she just... <laughs> While I can see that this is hard for Ian, he needs to see that in this case, we're the doctor, he's the patient, and he needs to take our advice. I don't know what we're going to do with Ian. He's very, very, very conservative about this entire process. He needs to think bigger and think longer term. Do you appreciate the strength of having something that would work as an investment as well as somewhere to live? Oh, for sure, yeah. And for someone, this would make a great investment and a nice living space, probably for someone with more stuff than me mm. and with more people in their family than me. I know it doesn't bother you now, mm. but it's going to bother you when you come to sell it if you haven't maximised all that you could have done. This is true, I understand that. I'm not sure he does, you know. You can take a horse to water. But you can't make it buy a house. No. You'll end up in a small little flat. I know. But he'll need to sell in three years and it won't have gone up in value. I know. It does make me slightly insane when people won't see yeah, that. You were insane years ago. <laughs> but we all knew that anyway. The more I walk around this house, the more I don't like it, actually. It's just really steeped in other people. And uh, I'm, I'm not liking this at all. So is there any chance of that growing on you, Ian? I wouldn't say even the slightest chance. Really? Actually, no. Oof. Two down, two rejections. You can take a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. But something tells me the tough times haven't even started yet. It's absolutely going to appeal to a certain demographic, but I don't think that demographic is me. He's a man of very few words, and he's going to be a man of even fewer words when I finish with him. This week, we're in Bristol trying to persuade clinical psychologist Ian Ensom that buying his first place is nothing to be afraid of. But this doc's a ditherer. He's still scared stiff, and despite our plan to make him add value, he's flatly rejected two properties that would have outperformed the market. There's millions of little things that are telling me I don't like this house. With a budget of £195,000, Ian needs to stretch himself now to buy somewhere that will earn him money in the future. We're just not getting through, and to cap it all, our trained therapist is being a bit too clinical when it comes to the search. But we can't deny that we're attempting a tricky balancing act. We're taking a first-time buyer, trying to find something he will really love, and something that will add value. So our next property is the Ian-friendly option. It's clean and totally move-inable. It's very close to the centre of town, but on a quiet street. It's on the market at £175,000. This is the kind of street I think I thought of when I was going to move to Bristol. My sister used to live here and she'd take me on weekends away from this dreadful boarding school I was in and she'd bring me here and there'd be these lovely gorgeous Georgian houses and so this kind of does fit that bill. But for a peaceful lane with his budget, we've struggled with space. Will he cope with the open plan kitchen? And the other rooms in the flat are also smaller than we've seen. But it does have a good layout and that wouldn't need altering. No walls to get scared of here, Ian. On the raised ground floor, so we get fantastic ceiling height. It is a nice room. Mm. Uh, let's address the, the first issue. Yes. The kitchen. Right. In an ideal world, I wouldn't have a kitchen that is so close to the dining room. But, yep. you know, it's not a horrendous obstacle. Uh, in my mind, I had a bigger kitchen planned. But, mm. as I've said, I'm prepared to compromise on a bunch of stuff. Now, bathroom. Oh, I like the bathroom. With a big window. It's a really nice big window, and it's a really nice bathroom. There's wooden floors. Underneath the carpet, right through the floor. Oh, uh, Phil, come on, you know right. the rules. Wonderful. Nearly all oh, okay. leases say that you can't have stripped floors because it's a sand thing. If you walk on a floor and the mm -hmm. floor is attached to the wall, to mm -hmm. the fabric of the building, that's the way the sand moves up and down the building. Okay. So if you have a floating floor that effectively floats above the existing one, right. the sand doesn't transfer. Okay. And the reason you could hear that couple upstairs having sex is probably because they had stripped floors. Right. I mean, I used to have a boyfriend and... When I stay the night at his flat, it was like snap, crackle and pop. Right. You could hit... I know. expand on that. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's an expression I've not heard before. You could hear the breakfast cereal going snap, oh, crackle and pop. Right. Nothing else, right. honestly. That'll be that then. <laughs> yeah, we believe you, Kirsty. Now here we've got the little study, which okay. is great. And here we've got the... Master bedroom. Again, nice big window, isn't it? Shame it's not a bigger room. That's not a huge problem for me, I don't think. I'm really? not after a massive bedroom. I'd rather have a bigger lounge living space. <laughs> That's what you always say, isn't it? You don't spend that much, much time, time in your bedroom. No, a no, bedroom really. should be light and sunny. Yeah. And a place where you want to wake up in the morning. So what do you think to it then, Ian? 
Well, I really liked it. It was great. It's the only house I've seen so uh, the only flat rather I've seen so far that I would think about putting an offer in. Okay. Oh, great. We're not surprised he likes this place. It's easy peasy to move straight in. But he could do better. The problem is he doesn't get excited about the concept of adding value. But as a late starter, it's something he really needs to grasp. But maybe our next appointment will really get the juices flowing, as it has a similar vibe to the last one which he clearly liked. But this one's much bigger and in tip-top condition. Mind you, it'll cost him. It's 10 grand over budget. You're in for a treat here, Ian. Am I? Well, it's a matter of opinion. Mm-hmm. I mean, what do you feel about the street and... The street's nice enough. This is, it's on a corner, isn't it? Which I always think is very good because you get the vistas. And this is a nicer kitchen than the other flat. Throughout the last few days, it has become clear that Ian wanted somewhere for here and now and not for its future potential. So this should be a winner. I don't get particularly excited when I see houses. But why like is this. that? It feels very much like a show home and it feels mm. like it's all been done. And if I was to move into here, mm. I would camp in here. I wouldn't want to do anything to it and I wouldn't feel compelled to do anything mm. to it. And being as how the price is quite high, I wouldn't be able to do anything to it. Well, we'd better move on then. OK. Oh, he's a contrary one. So you see what we're up against here. One minute it's too big, then it's too small, too finished, not finished enough. You're right, Phil. But I think this flat will have taught Ian a lesson and he'll have seen how short-sighted he's been. There's just no room to A, put his own stamp on the place, or B, make money and play catch-up with the market. The only one so far that has slightly impressed the good doctor was the smallest flat that had the least potential of the lot. I'm not prepared to let Ian settle for that, so we've made a final splurge on the blower to all the estate agents and it might have turned up a little gem. It's 17 grand over budget, but we love it and have managed to get Ian in the door before anybody else. And it's right in the heart of his dream patch, still on a quiet road while five minutes from bars and restaurants. But Ian's tough to please and even harder to read. Could this one be the cure? Yeah, it's really, really nice. From the outside, it's beautiful, I'd say. And the position? Lovely. Nice road, nice area. Did you see that? A smile. Now, the joy about this is that it's a maisonette, but it starts at the bottom, so you really have the feeling of your own house. OK, yeah. On paper, this flat has it all. Two levels, two good-sized bedrooms upstairs, a kitchen, dining room, communal garden and off-road parking. This flat feels more like a house. It's simply massive. And although it does need some redecoration, the decor's not bad enough to put Ian off. With some TLC, this place will easily make Ian a profit and be a great space to live in. It's nice, I like it. There's nothing that makes me not like it at the moment. And it has a view, which is something we've hitherto not seen. Yeah, absolutely. It has a really spectacular view from mm -hmm. almost every window. So, this is your dining room. Do you reckon to that? Well, it's not something that I require, but I guess it's a bonus. Now, obviously, there's potential for knocking down that wall and making a great big kitchen diner, which would be lovely. Wouldn't it yeah. just? That'd be yeah. with two windows and it'd be very light. Go and have a look upstairs, Ian, and see what you think. That's he's a fun. man of very few words, and he's going to be a man of even fewer words when I finish with him. Unless he starts to show some enthusiasm. I can't read. I, I can't you, read what's just, going on with him. You react so emotionally. Yeah, but us. he comes it's... in and goes... Mm, 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 mm. Maybe he loves this flat, but I'm certainly not the one that knows it. It's a funny little room, but it's... As, I mean, as studies go, it's great. It, we have just the most spectacular view here. This is rapidly becoming my favourite flat. Hello. Interesting up there. Yeah, it was actually. It was nice. Yeah. Amazing views, and the bedroom was fine, and uh, a really nice sized little study. What do you mm. think it's on at? I would imagine it's on for somewhere in excess of 190,000. Mm. <laughs> uh, yeah. 207,000. <laughs> but we would be taking the mech if we were showing you a flat at 207, which we thought couldn't be purchased for less than that. Mm. We wouldn't do that. You're going to have to I'm going to have to think about it and, <laughs> yeah. and, and pace around a lot and generally panic a lot this evening and get back to you tomorrow. Okay, do. Mm. Okay. Right? Kirsty's right. going to buy me a drink. I am not going to buy you a drink. I think I need a man-to-man -man talk with Ian, but first he's got a lot to think about. He has to decide whether he wants a property to suit him right here, right now, or this over-budget masonette that will stretch him but is a fantastic investment for the future. So how are you doing this morning, Ian? 
well, I'm in a state of some anxiety, but I'm doing okay. Overnight, I've come to the conclusion that the big expensive flat is the one I want quite a lot more than the other one. I'd encourage you to stretch now, to stretch financially now, because if in 18 months' time it then becomes comfortable, I think that, that's a sensible thing to do. Well, listen, let's finish up the coffee and go and make Kirsty. OK. So the only one in the running now is the over-budget, last-minute find. Yesterday, Ian loved the place for its space and location. But how does he feel today? I have to do what most people do when they buy a flat for the first time, is they have to scrimp and save for a couple of years. And it would put me in that position, but in a way that's encouraging because that's what I feel I should be doing. I'm excited by it, I think, more than nervous. Obviously I'm nervous, but I think it's, it feels like it's a thing I should be doing now. It feels good. Ian's really gaining confidence and seems to be positive about this property. But there is still the question of the work that needs doing. Ian, we spoke with the, uh, the agent and also the vendor of the property himself. He's had a quote done for complete overhaul of all the windows of this flat for a little under £3,000. Right. OK. Uh, the other bit of paper I've got is a quote done for the management company of the building to uh, fix this damp patch mm -hmm. in the dormer window. Quote of £1,233. OK. That would, it would cost me that amount of money. No, it wouldn't. No. Um, uh, the service charge, which is collected, I think, is thirty pounds, £30 a month. Thirty pounds a month. Okay. Um, would pay for this. Right, sir. Because there's enough saved up in the sinking fund. Okay. I think we need to um, go and put ourselves in a bit of neutral ground. Right. Let's go do that. Top marks to Ian. He's taken our advice and pulled it together, and is ready to make the biggest decision of his life. But what about the high asking price of two hundred and seven thousand pounds? I am incredibly loathe to go over 200,000. That really would be <laughs> killing me. I wouldn't let you go over 200,000. You That's can't sad. afford to make that flat into what it needs to be for you, for Ian's home. Mm. Oh, I think the answer is we shouldn't muck around. We should get yeah. on the telephone, if that's OK with you, Ian, and, and get on with negotiating. Please do, and give him hell. Well, let's talk numbers. I'd like to start at 194, 195. Mm -hmm. I'd like to end at about 197. That would be fantastic for me. Stuart, hi. I won't beat around the bush. We've got £194,000 to offer. Yeah. Yes. Oh, Stuart! We can't clear two. We can't clear two. We can't. We just can't. Okie doke. Brilliant. Bye. He said that his client wants something beginning with a two. Well, that suggests to me that that fact was valued at £200,000. Mm -hmm. Let's cut to the chase. Go back to the agent. 197 or bust. Right. I'm bullish. I'm bullish about this. I was sitting with Ian when you called and he looked at me and he just said 197 or plan B. OK. Brilliant. Bye. Neatly done, if I may say so myself. I wanted to reflect Ian's yeah. confident tone on this. Yeah. Put Is the it? emphasis back on them. Let him yeah. sweat about it for 48 yeah. hours. It's not going to be yeah. snapped out from under you. So the mm. offer of 197 grand is on the table. But the vendor isn't budging, so overnight Ian has agreed to climb an extra grand and lo and behold, it's accepted. Three months and several more sleepless nights later, the doctor's in the house. Well, flat. I've got this big plan to take a sledgehammer to the, to the wall, separating the kitchen and the dining room, and thereby making this enormous, fabulous room. Ian, I'm so proud. Next week, we're back in Northampton, catching up with Andrew and Ian, who almost drove Kirsty and I to distraction. I wouldn't be prepared to leave Birmingham and move into something like this. I really wouldn't. If, if, they, if they choose not to listen to our advice, that's absolutely fine. We've it's given not it. fine.